Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good long weekend. It is Tuesday, February 21st, 9 a.m. Eastern. Reminder, we've got the shortened holiday week this week, so four trading days, and that will certainly impact options that have weekly expiration, just meaning that time decay will be more significant. So checking in on where we stand here, we've got the potential of small gap down opens. We know that we started some notable daily consolidation in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to end last week. And the bears are hoping to follow through with that to start this week. And there's a couple key things that I'm going to be watching that I will point out to you. First, we're going to look at where we stand as far as the futures charts and some of these commodities. And then I'll highlight the, the key things that I'm going to be watching as far as setups for today. So starting off with the S&P 500, again, we've got the daily consolidation continuing and we have the S&P 500 losing this support level that was established fairly recently. And so weekly consolidation is clearly underway at this point. We were watching for signs that we were going to see a loss of the stair step pattern on the weekly time frame, which was a higher low every single candle, and that has now been lost. So weekly consolidation is underway. And we know that what we're looking for here is a number of things. Number one, are the bears gonna prove to us that we're seeing significant weakness from here? And to do so, we need to see a bigger bigger retracement than 382. So from the last weekly pivot point, we are currently testing the 382 retracement level here. And the way that I simplify it often is just using EMA 12 and just saying that if weekly EMA 12 support holds, then it's healthy consolidation and a potential bull flag. Whereas if we pull back and lose that level, that's when the retracement starts to approach 50%. And that's when the bears start to, to see things that they want to see. They want to see a, a bigger than 50% retracement so that it creates the space that the next time we bounce, it's possible that we set a weekly lower high. And the overall goal for the bears would be confirming a weekly downtrend into March. So pull back for a few weeks, bounce, lower high, lower low. That would be a notable shift if that were to happen. But first things first, how much do we consolidate before we set, what we're anticipating is going to be a weekly higher low because there's a lot of space for it to form. The NASDAQ is currently testing support, the same support that the S&P 500 has already broken. The NASDAQ has not broken that level yet. We're literally right on top of it right now. So if that level breaks, that's definitely a point in favor of the bears this week. That's one thing that they wanna see. I'll point out a couple other things that the bears wanna see. And just to fill in, I personally currently have a, a bear lean for those of you that aren't in the chat room. I've got a, a bear lean since Thursday afternoon, shifted my IRA to have more bear exposure than bull exposure because the long positions I have are long-term no touch. I'm not selling them. And also took a Netflix short on Thursday. So as Lori often says, the most important trade is the trade that you're already in. So I'm gonna be watching the broader market and uh, Netflix first thing this morning to determine whether or not I should remain in those positions and uh, probably not gonna be jumping on any new trades in the first at least 15 minutes or so. Wanna see things settle down a little bit and I'll be using the hourly downtrend as a guide. But we've got the NASDAQ testing the support right now and for QQQ, that level is 297.25 and here in pre-market, we are just above that level. So if the bears are going to see a nice start to the week. They want 297.25 to break on QQQ and to see some follow through on that break. And again, same thing. We'll be watching the weekly retracement size of that consolidation to see whether it's a healthy bull flag, back testing, and holding EMA support to try and see continuation, or if we lose that EMA and it then becomes more significant retracement. And just as an example, Bitcoin, we'll look at Bitcoin here in just a moment, but Bitcoin on the weekly is exactly what the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ want to see. The bulls, I should say. They want to see that weekly pullback hold the EMA support into continuation. So that's just an example of what healthy retracement would look like if the bulls were able to pull that off. The dollar has a daily higher low being set now at 103.76 and is trying to head back to the recent high of 104.67 to try and keep this daily uptrend going. I'm essentially viewing this as our high double bottom for the higher low, higher high, another higher low. And so really the only two levels I care about for the dollar, and again, I'm, I'm zoomed out on the dollar. I don't usually zoom in too much 
Uh, I'm not, I'm personally not looking for a tick for tick correlation or inverse correlation to the broader market, but the, the two levels that I care about, 103.76 and 104.67. If neither of those two levels are breaking, then I'm not really caring what the dollar is doing. And if one of those levels is breaking, then I am caring what the dollar is doing. So that's just a way that I can, uh, my attention, my, my attention is a limited resource. So I can only be watching so many things in the market. So I wanna simplify things as much as possible. And there are many times where I just make those simple statements. If neither of these two levels are breaking, then this chart is not giving me any information. So I don't have to continue looking and zooming in and looking for divergence and little clues. It's just those two levels. One of them will break eventually and we'll get new information once it does. The metals are having a little bit of a bounce attempt from the weekend, keeping in mind that these futures charts did trade Sunday night and Monday a little bit, certainly limited hours, but uh, there's, there's some daily candles on the futures charts from over the holiday. So gold is trying to shape up a little 12 hour uptrend. So we would have to hold the low of 1818 and the bulls would have to see a break of 1848. And you can see the gold 12 hour EMA 12 resistance has been driving the price down. So if we get over that level, it will show us a notable little shift. So bulls have to break 1848 and I'm just rounding a little bit, but bulls have to break that level for a clear daily bounce to be underway. Silver, very similar, but silver's bounce is a little bit more developed. We're up near the high of the bounce at the moment. And just from the daily chart, we can see that the bounce is underway. EMA 12 resistance is dropping down here. And anything under 2259 would be a daily lower high. And so the downtrend is gonna be our guide. And essentially we're watching, can the bulls see a big enough bounce to create the space to try and eventually shape up that daily trend change. The miners also trying to get a bounce going, bullish reversal candle to hammer on the daily from Friday. And we're going to test that high first thing. It was a double top at 2847 on GDX. So if we fail 2847, the bulls must hold the low of Friday to shape up an hourly uptrend because we know the bulls have to confirm an hourly uptrend if we're gonna see a daily bounce underway. And that's very important. You know, we ended Friday with SPY and QQQ closing near the high of the day. And so you zoom in for the details, this daily candle on QQQ can look exactly like this with an hourly uptrend or with an hourly downtrend. You have to zoom in to get those details. And so we zoom into the hourly and we could say, okay, it's a nice bounce to end Friday, but it is still an hourly downtrend. And we're just looking for that hourly bounce to give us a lower high. And so that was part of the reason why I stuck with the short positions that I had over the weekend because the hourly downtrend is my guide, at least uh, in terms of Netflix. So again, if, if we had, you know, shaped up differently where we, if we bounced in the morning and then midday consolidation and then closed at the high of the day, that candle looks the same, but it's an hourly uptrend versus an hourly downtrend. So again, my, my trading leveled up big time. You know, my first two years of technical analysis, I was just looking at candlestick shapes. And I would try and get information, say, okay, well, that's a bullish candle on QQQ. But then I learned, I zoom in and I get more details. And for that exact reason, you know, we can have different degrees of confidence as far as um, whether or not that candle is going to follow through for the bulls or not. Oil. So oil futures contract now, I'm on to CLJ, which is the April contract, daily inside bar after a big red day on Friday. And again, with oil, knowing that I don't trade it actively, I'm doing the same thing where I'm just highlighting a couple key levels that I care about. I care about the wall of resistance in the low 82s, and I care about the wall of support in the 72s. And we are right in the middle of that. We're $5 below resistance and $5 above support. So I know that we can chop around while we're in the middle of that range, but this is the range that I care about. And if you go to the two day time frame, you can see that we're tightening up here where we've got a low, high, pretty much a double bottom. It was a bear break with zero follow through, lower high, trying for the higher low. So if I were an active oil trader, I would care how this tightening two day range breaks. But not being an active oil trader, I'm zoomed out. I care how this weekly breaks. And also watching the implications on the energy sector for the direction that oil breaks here. And it might be another couple of weeks as well. But we know that the oil two-day tightening range is going to break before the weekly range 
So if I were actively trading oil, I would be watching the shorter term time frame to potentially get a little bit of an earlier signal. Natural gas. I know a lot of people are interested in a natural gas bounce. The one thing we here at the chart guys keep saying is don't try and nail the bottom with natural gas. They call it the widow maker for a reason. It's one of my poorest trading instruments in my last three years of trading. And it was, it was a bad, I forget what year it was. It might've been 2019 where it was uh, my least, it was my biggest losing trading ticker. And so the next year I just said, I'm not trading it. And so I didn't trade natural gas for a year and a half after that, because, you know, if, if I have a, a ticker like Tesla, let's say that's my, you know, most profitable ticker. And then I have my least profitable ticker. Obviously I want to be focusing on the most profitable one and I want to stop focusing on the least profitable one. But with where we stand, again, just keeping it as simple as possible, we got daily EMA 12, which has been resistance for well over a month. We've got a weekly stair step, just a lower high every single week for over two months. And again, knowing that when we bounce in natural gas, even a weak weekly bear flag bounce would be a 40% bounce. We don't have to nail that bottom. And if you look back here, we had a weekly stair step drop in natural gas. The weekly bull break happened after being already 19% off the low. But after that point, we then went up another 34%. So you don't have to nail the bottom. And, and one thing that I often say is, you know, we're not trying to nail tops and bottoms. We should not expect to nail tops and bottoms. We're here for the meat in the middle of the move. And so we know natural gas is certainly volatile enough where for gains to be worthwhile, we don't have to nail the bottom. So long story short, I'm just patiently waiting for the weekly stair step to break. And Tesla did something very similar. And Jungle Funk Joey was using that as one of his trade signals. When the weekly stair step pattern breaks, it wasn't as long, it was only five candles, but that was his long signal, just knowing that we were so oversold. And obviously we've seen very significant follow through from that point. So from a swing trading longer term perspective, natural gas, we're in a downtrend on every single time frame. So trying to go long when you're in a downtrend on every single time frame, and this is coming from someone who loves bounce trades, it's just not a, a scenario where probability is in your favor. So I will absolutely have Boyle, which is the leveraged ETF, on my trading docket on a daily basis at some point this year. I know that will be the case, but it's not yet. And I'm not trying to nail a bottom. And when we see bulls prove something to me, then I will reassess. But until then, here we are at the lows. And we're not even that extreme. You know, the weekly RSI is oversold. We've dropped down in the past into the low 20s before, but the daily is only just getting oversold. The four hour is only just getting oversold. So again, we're not at extremes. This sideways range that we were in just cooled everything off in terms of oversold RSI levels were then no longer oversold. Bitcoin, so Bitcoin's got a battle going on with 25.2 thousand, which is the only nearby resistance level in play. Really for me, the next level that I'm looking at after 25.2 is uh, 28.8 previous support now resistance, which is over 10% to the upside. This is what bulls are hoping is this is an ascending triangle because an ascending triangle generally has a bullish lean with the pattern where you just reject from resistance, but you keep forming these higher lows and then eventually you break that resistance. But keeping a close eye on Bitcoin, just knowing that we're tightening up here and we're going to see a volatility spike sometime within the next two days where we either clearly break 25.2 to see weekly bull flag continuation, or we reject and drop down. For me right now, a clear hard rejection would be a break of 23.8. So if 23.8 were to break, that's successful defense from the bears. And I'm keeping a close eye on this for the implications on the crypto stocks, which I've been trading fairly significantly lately. And so if we get a clear bear break of this tightening pattern on Bitcoin, that's gonna help me looking bearish on Riot. And if we get a bull break, then I'm going to be looking bullish on Riot and MARA. And right now, Riot and MARA are trying to shape up a daily higher low to shape up an eventual trend change back to the bulls. And that's Riot, and here's MARA. But we are pulling back a bit. So lows of Friday are in play, and if I wanted to be an aggressive bull, I'd be watching for a potential play off of the lows of Friday. But I'm probably going to be waiting for... Bitcoin to give us a clear break of that pattern before I look to begin actively trading MARA and Riot again. And just one more crypto name, just for the possibility of a short squeeze, SI has a huge amount of short interest. 
rightfully so, with the weakness of this chart. A lot of institutions have started building some positions. So keeping that in mind as well. And just knowing that if Bitcoin breaks 25.2 and heads up towards the lack of resistance and upper 20,000s, then SI can be a short squeeze. And you can see the bears significantly defended 2471, 2471 being the highest level that we've seen in months. And they significantly defended it last week. But again, just keeping an eye on it. It's extremely volatile. It moves 10% very easily in both directions. But again, it's just another, so much of my trading is just establishing names and things that I'm watching and that never develop. And then I just move on. But I highlight, okay, keep an eye on SI. If Bitcoin breaks 25.2, look to SI to see if you can see signs of a short squeeze. Do you have a runaway bull volume? Do you have stair-step pattern on the 15-minute time frame on increasing bull volume? These are things that would have me start to favor a short squeeze. So at the moment, there is no sign of a short squeeze, but I lay out the criteria of if these things happen, then I start watching for these signals. So keeping that in mind in SI. Before we keep going here, just a note, this Thursday, Chart Guys, Jungle Funk Joey is going to be doing a free webinar, and he's going to be talking about utilizing different time frames and trends and all of that stuff, pretty much the, the backbone. You know, if technical analysis has pillars of foundation of education, it's these concepts, identifying trends with price levels and how do these time frames interact with each other. We've also got a PDF uh, with some helpful graphics to go out. So sign up with the link and that will give you the link to the webinar on Thursday. And if you can't make it live uh, by signing up with that email, we'll send you that uh, replay once it is recorded. And we've also got a TikTok. Check out tiktok.com slash at chart guys, different content than we've got on Twitter and other social media stuff. All right, so plays I'm watching today. One thing I like to do when I'm preparing for the morning is establishing some bulls that I'm watching and some bears that I'm watching because QQQ and SPY, I can see are weaker this morning, absolutely. But if we were to see QQQ hold 297.25, that daily support, and then just start bullish all morning, I would want to know a couple names to be keeping an eye out for a bull lean. If we see a break of 297.25 and the bears control things, then I want to have a number of names that I'm watching on the bear side. And so the key things that I'm watching today for bears to continue to prove to me that they are in control here. The first is something that we haven't seen a lot lately on this six week bounce. And you've heard me talk about it a hundred times, I'm sure, but all major sectors at the low of the day together. And by all major sectors, I mean QQQ, XLF, XLV. If you give me all three of those at the low together, then that has me say, okay, bears, I see you and you're convincing me to keep my bear lean and to keep holding my shorts and to be looking for hourly lower highs or 15 minute lower highs as the results of bounces. That's one thing that's been missing because the past couple days where QQQ should say the past couple times where QQQ has had a decent red day, healthcare, which has normally been weak over the last couple of months, has had some solid green days. So that shows me rotation. And if rotation is going on, that, in my opinion, is going to favor healthy weekly consolidation. If I'm a bull, I want rotation. Anytime QQQ is red, give me one of our other major sectors showing me some green. If we see all major sectors at the low together, it shows me money leaving the market as opposed to money rotating around in different places. And that's what a bear really wants to see to start to gain confidence that they are taking short-term control. So we got hourly downtrend guides. We've got watching all of our major sectors to see if bears can prove to us that money is leaving the market. I'm watching a couple to go along with QQQ, 297.25, XLF, financial sector has a key support test first thing this morning as well. We've got a double bottom at daily support and a double top. Double top at 37.11, double top at 36, double bottom at 36.07. If 36.07 breaks, that's another big tally in the bear column to start the week. The ideal morning for the bears, I can lay it out and I can know, is this the ideal morning or not once the bell rings and once I, once I observe the first 30 minutes. If QQQ breaks 297.25, if XLF breaks 36.07, that's a great start to the morning for the bears. If both of those sectors hold those supports, bears aren't going anywhere on the morning. So key supports on those two major sectors in play first thing, 
and that's a top watch for me to start. Apple's also a major name that has been helping the bulls hold on to some of their strength recently because it's still a strong daily uptrend and small gap down open shaping up. The bears would love 149.22 breaking. If that happens, Apple loses the daily uptrend for the first time in over a month. And that would be pretty much if if QQQ breaks 297.25, Apple is very likely going to be heading down to test this 149.22 level. And again, if we break that level, it will be our lead bull general. This is our one of our strongest tech names and one of our very important names. If that breaks support, that's going to be our lead bull shifting to join Team Bear, which is exactly what the bears want to see. So that's another one of my major keys that I'm watching for to start this week if the bears are going to continue to prove their short-term control for me. And names that are starting week down near the low of yesterday, obviously names that break, I should say Friday, obviously names that break the low of Friday are weaker than names that hold the low of Friday. And I'm going to be watching the hourly downtrend. So, you know, the bell could ring and Apple could bounce 1%, but if we do not break 152.63, it's still an hourly downtrend. So again, the hourly downtrend is going to be my guide for a lot of these names. And Netflix, my swing position, is going to test the low of Friday first thing. I really want to see 342 break. I want to see some follow through. My stop right now is over 349 because that's our hourly lower high resistance. And I want to see the bears keep the hourly downtrend going. A couple bull names that I'm keeping an eye on if I am going to be looking bull. So again, if if QQQ and XLF hold their daily supports first thing and we start the morning with a bounce, we've got some stronger names. Meta had news as far as Meta copying Twitter, subscription service, additional revenue model. So responding really bullish to that. And so the names I'm about to highlight are names that have a lot of space for hourly higher lows. We've got some names like Apple already under the low of Friday, and we've got some names like Meta way above the low of Friday. So we could see weakness all morning and we would still be looking for an hourly higher low compared to 170.05. So bulls ideally on meta, we know on a really strong uptrend, holding hourly EMA 12 here would be best case. We're going to look at the high of pre-market 177.35 as a resistance level, but clearly a lead bull on the morning, at least in pre-market. And looking at pre-market, bulls really want to hold 174.60 because if 174.60 holds, it's a potential hourly bull flag. And if 174.60 breaks, then again, we're still going to look for the hourly higher low, but that's when the retracement size gets a bit more significant. Other names that have a lot of space for an hourly higher low, the biotech sector, all Friday was bouncing. A lot of space, anything above 84.23 is an hourly higher low. And the other one is Tesla. Tesla, giving some of it back, but again, we've got multiple percent before we get to the low of Friday where other names are already breaking the low of Friday. So that's a little bit of relative strength. The bulls would have to hold 197.50 and break 208.44 to confirm an hourly uptrend and to confirm another daily higher low. Tesla bulls keep full control of this daily chart as long as EMA 12 support keeps holding because that keeps the daily uptrend intact. So again, if I am going to be looking bullish, I want it to be on names that are more, have a more developed hourly trend change trying to take shape. Because a name like Apple already breaking to a lower low, Apple has to start from square one. Apple has to bounce and then form the higher low and higher high, whereas Tesla is a step ahead. We already had the big bull move. Now we're trying for the higher low and higher high. So those are three names that have a lot of space for hourly higher lows that I'm keeping an eye on. And just one more, U.S. cannabis. You only want to be looking at MSOS if you are familiar with this sector because it's lower liquidity. You know, it's not your standard uh, stock as far as Tesla, Netflix, all that. But keeping a close eye on MSOS just for the possibility if we break 736, there is a lack of resistance overhead. And essentially, it's attempting to be a laggard bull. So just keeping an eye on that. And this is just because I watched this sector all the time anyways, haven't been trading it much recently, but still always keeping an eye on it. So that's just a a clear level and a clear lack of resistance above that level that has me interested in that setup. NVDA has earnings on Wednesday and NVDA bulls really want to hold 208.11 
to keep the daily uptrend going. Right now we've got a double top and almost a double bottom there. We're going to test the low of Friday first thing, 209.75. And after 209.75, it's 208.11. So there is a support level in play, but keeping in mind that these earnings on Wednesday are going to dictate whether NVDA sees clear weekly consolidation on a bearish reaction, or if it's a bullish reaction, keeps this 100% plus bounce going. So those are the main names that I'm watching. Obviously, we've got a whole bunch of other uh, tech names that I'm going to be keeping an eye on, Microsoft, Google, but um, a couple other names I want to highlight here. The VIX, of course. So the VIX, I generally don't do much with the VIX, but it is showing me signs that it's shifting momentum here. And the way that I've been keeping it simple, again, just something that I don't actively trade, just making a simple statement, the VIX bulls are not proving a thing to me as long as weekly EMA 12 is resistance. And that's because we rejected, 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 rejected. And now we are a good bit above that level. Granted, it's just the start of the week, but you go to the two day time frame. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, we had a clear bear pullback. We now have a two day uptrend. When's the last time we had a two day uptrend? Hasn't happened since we topped out. So we're seeing signs. Okay, we're getting little signs that the character of this chart is shifting a bit here. And so that you know aligns with the shift in SPY and QQQ to starting weekly consolidation. But again, just something to be keeping an eye on. And the VIX has an uptrend support line that we are bouncing off of right now. So that is another little point in favor of the bears as far as am I believing this weekly consolidation in SPY and QQQ? Well, if the VIX keeps showing this reversal, then that increases probabilities that bears are gaining some nice short-term control. One more name that I'm watching, JEPI and Chart Guys Lamont has been keeping an eye on this one. It's a very high dividend payer, very high and often. I, I use adjusted for dividends on the chart because of that reason, but I just like tightening ranges. If ever I'm you know looking around, what do I wanna trade and I don't have a game plan, obviously, through this morning, I've shown that I've got a whole bunch I'm watching already, but if I'm lost, what, you know, what am I looking for? I just try and find tightening ranges because it's the break of the tightening ranges that we know leads to volume and volatility. And as a trader, volume and volatility equals opportunity. So JEPI, I'm just viewing this as a two-day equilibrium that has been tightening up for two and a half months at this point, just over two months. And this is going to break sometime within the next week or so. And it's either going to be a clear bull break heading back to recent highs or a clear bear break uh, seeing further pullback and weekly consolidation. So the levels that I care about right now for this tightening range, as long as 5440 is holding, the bulls are holding support and the bears, I should say the bulls want to break 5518, a little double top. So just keeping an eye on those two levels and if it breaks bull, then I may look to establish a swing position using the higher lows as a stop. But keeping a close eye on the direction that we break pre-market with the weakness here, we are going to be testing the support here of 54.40, but just keeping an eye on how this breaks. So SPY opening week, again, gap down open on SPY and QQQ. QQQ is testing 297.25 first thing. XLF is testing 36.07 first thing. Bears want both of those names to break their levels. And we'll see how the first 15 minutes of trading goes. Gonna log into my account just in case something shapes up. AI is gonna test the high of yesterday first thing. They had some news pre-market here. AI 2437 high of Friday resistance is in play. An aggressive bear is going to look for a top fish off that level just because it would be low risk. But we would have to see bears control the morning in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ if we were going to see a convincing rejection from that resistance. Pretty much if I'm going to be trading in the first 15 minutes, I have to be top fishing or bottom fishing a level because of how much volatility we see first thing in the mornings. If I'm going to get a good risk reward setup, that's really what it's got to be. Otherwise, I patiently wait. And for me personally, my trading in the 
the second hour of the day versus the first hour of the day is much higher probabilities when we have some nice five minute and 15 minute uh, time frames for clarity after the morning plays out a little bit. So here's the open. KiKiQ, I need to see 297 break. If not, it's a double bottom at 297.25 and XLF just held support initially. So let's see if that remains the case or if bears can convincingly take out those levels because right now both supports are holding. Meta saw a good bit of that pre-market strength fade there right before the open. So we are still looking for meta hourly higher low compared to 171 or make that 170.05, but it's not an hourly bull flag at this point due to that much lower open. So again, right now bulls are holding supports, which opens the door for the possibility we see a morning bounce here. Bears are not going to be comfortable unless we take out both of those levels on KiKiQ and XLF. I should say short-term bears. You know, bears that are looking at the hourly downtrend, they're not worried about a morning bounce here. But obviously you can see a good bit of red on the screen and my fidelity screen might look confusing to a lot of you, but this is a way that I just can easily visually keep an eye on all the major sectors and all the major names. So KiKiQ, another low of the day test right here, still grinding right above that level. And that's really what this morning all boils down to. The first part of the morning, can bears take out both of those support levels? MARA pulling back pretty notably from the open first thing. So whenever I see that, the first thing I do is I go look at Bitcoin. And so I say, okay, is Bitcoin showing any notable weakness? Nah, Bitcoin's still trading sideways. So MARA and Riot are reacting on their own. They're reacting to the NASDAQ. Pretty much they're either reacting to the NASDAQ or Bitcoin, obviously sometimes both. So now we're back to testing the lows on KiKiQ and XLF. Again, bears just want that follow through because bulls are still defending. Meta now has one of the better bounces after that weaker open. So it is still definitely standing out as a lead bull. And again, Tesla and XBI trying for hourly higher lows to form versus the lows of Friday. AI bulls did break the high of Friday, so no top fish rejection there. I like AI's daily chart, how it's shaping up now. Getting nice and tight. So daily higher low is now set on AI, making 2265 as a key support. And again, this is the volatile AI, artificial intelligence sector name. And now it's all about 2677 resistance. Can the bulls confirm a daily uptrend to set a weekly higher low which would keep this weekly consolidation very healthy. So good start for the bulls on AI. So some bounce follow through on KiKiQ. Again, we did break support by 19 cents, but for me, that's a double bottom. Tesla's high of Friday is not far away. Looking up at 208.30, still about 1% from where we stand. We've got XLF up at its high of the day. So if we're not gonna break these support levels, we are gonna be watching for some morning bounce, keeping in mind that a lot of these names still can bounce all morning and be in an hourly downtrend. For example, Amazon, Amazon can bounce one and a half percent from here and anything under 97.38 is just an hourly lower high. So it's important to determine what time frame is most important to you. Because if you're a bear and the hourly downtrend is the most important time frame, then again, you're not overly concerned if we bounce a bit on the morning. Netflix broke the low of Friday. No real follow through, but again, I'm just going to be walking down my stop on that position every hourly lower high that we set. 
Decent bounce on MARA and Riot from the initial morning weakness. Let's see if we hit five minute oversold conditions. We did dip down to five minute oversold back to the high of the day. Currently an inside bar on MARA and Riot as well. High of Friday on Riot, 670 is closer in play. So if the QQQ bulls are going to have confidence that this low of support can hold through the morning, we have to confirm a five minute uptrend. So wherever we top out on this initial push, this initial bounce off support, we then need to see that clear five minute higher low and higher high as a result of the next consolidation. And that would give the bulls a bit of breathing room and a bit more confidence. Bears obviously are hoping, all right, bounce a little bit on your initial test of support and then roll over on increasing bear volume to take out that level. MNMD for you low cap lovers. Psychedelic name is breaking its tightening daily range bullish. 414 bull break, now 428, the highest level in many months is back in play. Again, another low cap name, but it's been trading very well during the last couple of months with a nice daily EMA 12 support guide, a nice daily uptrend. And we can already see volume-wise, Friday's total volume, 375,000 shares. Again, low volume. But we are already, you know, we're going to be at a third of Friday's entire volume in the first 10 minutes of trading today. So that clearly shows us that MNMD has some nice volume coming in. Riot is testing the high of Friday, so Riot is trying to stand out as a lead bull as long as QQQ shows strength. Meta and Riot at the top of the bull list. Again, Tesla's up there still as well. AI is certainly responding very well to its news, plus the QQQ bounce. XLF did break support, so that stands out to me. XLF broke the double bottom at 3607. But again, it's rotation. If XLF is dropping while QQQ is bouncing, bears would love to see QQQ break the low of the day and join XLF weakness, but pretty decent bounce so far off of that support level. So Riot approaching 670 resistance. Got to reboot my Fidelity real quick. The chart is giving me spotty data. IWM is standing out as a lead bear. Most important sector for IWM is the financial sector. So the fact that XLF is a lead bear on the morning, seeing IWM following along with it. NVDA back in the green. So NVDA held daily support. Big green move as we head towards earnings. Resistance of 215.25 but broke the low of Friday by 30 cents. Again, pretty much a double bottom, same as QQQ. And now trying to head to hourly resistance. Meta resistance is going to be the high of pre-market, 177.35. A lot of space for meta bulls to try for a five minute higher low next consolidation. That's the next big question for me is, can QQQ bulls confirm a five minute uptrend from here? It's not surprising to bounce off of that support on the initial attempt. The question is, can we follow through from that support hold?
XLV is in the red, but it's still above the low of Friday. So XLV, not really a major impact on the morning right now. I'm essentially just watching the relationship between XLF and QQQ. As QQQ bulls have bought the dip, at least initially here on the morning. Tesla up to that high of Friday. Bull break over 208.44. So next resistance level on Tesla. I'm looking at 214 as an hourly lower high level. We've also got the high of after hours. Friday, 209.77 comes first. But again, that's a, technically an hourly uptrend confirming. We topped out at the end of Friday. The low of today is an hourly higher low, and then we broke the high of Friday. So hourly uptrend on Tesla. And again, positioned well, Meta, Tesla, positioned well if QQQ can confirm the five minute uptrend from here. Riot is still battling the high of Friday. Clearly, Riot is stronger than MARA. MARA's high of Friday resistance is still multiple percent away, 787. So how do I use that information? If I'm looking bullish, I'm looking at Riot. If I'm keeping an eye out for a bear trade, then I'm more interested in MARA. But with that Riot bull break, next resistance level, we're looking at seven psychological. AI definitely giving back a lot of that morning move. Great volatility in both directions as usual. 2385 key support. Creating space for a potential five minute lower high to be the result of the next bounce. QQQ has now bounced half a percent off this support level. Again, it's all buy-in of that support. First thing as Meta is testing the high of pre-market. We can say AI bulls are not positioned well for when QQQ sees five minute consolidation next. Amazon is still clearly a lead bear as is Google. They are not benefiting nearly as much from this QQQ bounce. Google hasn't even made it back to the high of the day yet. So clear relative strength in Meta, clear relative weakness in Amazon and Google. So the next trade for bulls at this point will be trying to look for a five minute higher lows with QQQ. We want to ensure we're going to be watching retracement size. So when QQQ does top out on this initial push, bulls want to see less than 50% retracement to try and keep the consolidation healthy and get that five minute uptrend. Zooming out bigger picture, anything under 301.52 is an hourly lower high. But again, a double bottom at support with a solid reaction. MARA, or I should say Fidelity, doesn't have MARA shorts available. Otherwise, I'd be keeping an eye out for a top fish. Just would want a time, you know, if MARA can't break the high of Friday, 787, wanting to time a top fish shorting MARA into QQQ five minute consolidation, but no shares on Fidelity at the moment.
You could be watching, you know, depending on how zoomed in you are here, you can be watching the QQQ one minute time frame because we're going to have to essentially lose one minute EMA 12 support if we're going to see five minute consolidation underway. And that might be the start of five minute consolidation, and it is. Pretty big one minute red candle, very short lived. So if the bulls do see a new high of the day here, you can consider that a quick little higher low and higher high, and then I would be zooming out to the 15 minute time frame. But need a new high of the day at this point for QQQ. Confirm that uptrend. Again, bears would love for QQQ to roll over from here and see a new low of the day to join XLF weakness. QQQ has been the star of the show as far as being the clear driver of the market recently, in my opinion. Back to the high of the day test on QQQ. Going to the futures chart to just see what the 15 minute time frame looks like. Probably stick with the Like a 30 minute clarity. Don't often use the 30 minute, but clear resistance level from pre market on the 30 minute. Nice little battle here. We just double topped at the high of the day. Double top to the penny. If we break 297, 97, that one minute candle low. That would be a successful double top rejection. And this is a reaction. That candle is a reaction to data. But it is still holding support. MARA with the hard pullback. So again, I love the volatility in these crypto names as well. We just went up essentially 6% from the low of the day, and then we just pulled back a quick 3% plus. So again, a lot of traders don't care about the one minute time frame, but you know, if you're trading the first 20 minutes of the open here, then we got a nice little double bottom, double top, which is going to dictate short term what QQQ is doing. Posting a ticker request thread in the chart guys chat room. So AI is going to be looking for a five minute lower high to be the result of the next bounce. We're still hovering just above the low of the day. We do have XLF and XLV at the low of the day together. So all that's missing is QQQ. And if QQQ breaks the low of the day here, that's a big win for the bears on the morning. Checking in on our lead bears. Google still very weak. Amazon still weak as well. Any name that breaks its low of the day from here is going to stand out on the weaker side of things. So again, we're, the how we resolve here on QQQ is going to have such a significant implication on the morning. We're either going to see a new low of the day and a break of a double bottom of support with all major sectors probably at the low of the day together, or QQQ sets a five minute high or low here, sees a new high of the day, and has a 
successful double bottom of support and notable bounce follow through. They are completely opposite sentiment and you know everything that goes along with it. And we do have more data coming out at 10 a.m., so keep an eye out for another little spike in volume. Checking my whiteboard to remember exactly what it is, not that it matters to me. Existing home sales. There's a like in the size of this retracement on QQQ at this point. New low of the day on AI. Just looking at some of these ticker requests. So Tesla, more pullback than the bulls want to see here with QQQ. Anything about the low of the day is a five minute higher low, but size of the retracement has bulls just hoping for a tightening range at this point. Anything above 203.71 is a five minute higher low. And then anything under 209.71 would be a lower high. So it's doing the same thing as QQQ here. QQQ is a little bit weaker as it's testing support now. VRNA, doing the same thing as QQQ, still above the low of the day. Is it a monthly cup and handle? Not officially, no. And that is because the right side needs to be lower than the left. That is a criteria of the cup and handle. Double top or lower into a bull flag. So could this be a monthly bull flag? Yes, it's possible, but it just doesn't meet the textbook criteria of what creates a cup and handle pattern. 1968 key short-term support on the daily. So MARA giving back a lot of that move, unable to break the high of Friday. Again, that relative weakness clearly stood out. Now trying to hold the low of the day, 723. And there is potential for, same as Tesla, where we could see a tightening five-minute range for a good part of the morning if bulls are able to defend the low of the day here. QQQ just held the low of the day by 13 pennies. Bulls need a one-minute uptrend for a five-minute higher low to try and be shaping up. So MARA, same thing. We're just looking for a one minute lower high on the bounce. We just had a one minute stair step waterfall drop. Got to confirm a one minute uptrend for a clear five minute higher low. And again, with the, the size of this decently wide range, it's entirely possible that we tighten up until you know 10.15. We'll see what this 10 a.m. homes data does, but five minute higher low attempts are being made. AA, stronger, five minute uptrend with the higher low and higher high. We got the high of the day, 49.37. Key daily resistance is 50.44, but certainly some relative strength here just to be testing the high of the day. The five minute consolidation was much less significant retracement. I am considering this all the same hourly bounce from Friday. So we will need to see a clear hourly uptrend eventually confirmed, but morning relative strength standing out. This is a, you know, it doesn't look like much, but again, this QQQ battle right now is very important for potential momentum on the day. Coin. Same thing as QQQ, big five minute pullback, trying to hold the low of the day for a five minute higher low. If we do, there's a lot of space for a five minute lower high and potential tightening range. Daily inside bar. Looks like we have earnings after hours. So keep an eye on that. 
uh, just tightening range within the range of Friday and a potential tightening five minute range if bulls can confirm the one minute uptrend. QQQ trying to shape up a one minute uptrend. Have to do so for the five minute higher low. And again, that's just an example of how different time frames interact with each other, which is what Jungle Funk Joey is going to be going over Thursday. But one minute uptrend being confirmed, setting the five minute higher low is what the bulls are attempting to pull off here. MSFT with a short lean. Hourly downtrend is our guide. Anything under 258.30 is an hourly lower high. We've also got hourly EMA 12 as a resistance guide over the last three days. What's the five minute doing? Double bottom at the low of the day. So an aggressive bear is going to be top fishing the high of the day, but obviously it's going to be an aggressive bear is going to need QQQ to roll over into fresh lows here. A patient bear is going to be looking for an hourly lower high next bounce. Aggressive bulls playing off the low of today. Aggressive bears playing off the high of today. So you need to determine if you want to be aggressive or conservative. And that determines what time frame you want to be focusing on. So SI is clearly a lead bear. Again, none of these other crypto names are dropping down to new lows of the day yet. They're close, but SI is leading the way down and Riot is now testing the low of the day. But SI is weaker. Low of Friday is coming into play, 1661. So an aggressive bull is going to try and bottom fish that level, but I would need to see signs of an hourly trend change shaping up back to the bulls. To be interested, looking for a daily higher low compared to 1402. Because even if Bitcoin does hold strong, if QQQ rolls over here, these crypto names are going to be dragged down. And you can see these QQQ bulls are doing everything they can to defend this support. We failed to confirm a one minute uptrend, so here we are back to testing this base of support again. Two minutes now, a nice little tightening range. Netflix down to a new low of the day. That's a good sign for the Bears. I may add to my Netflix short if QQQ breaks support just because I have a nice profit cushion there and it would be essentially averaging up on my short but just getting a little bit more aggressive because again if, if QQQ does see a new low of the day here the table is set for all major sectors to hit the low of the day at the same time which we haven't seen in a bit and that for me generally is an indication to be a bit more aggressive as a bear. So AI is a five minute stair step waterfall drop at this point. I may be interested in a five minute lower high short on AI next time it bounces. It's clearly stood out as a lead bear since we hit the high of the day. Very brief lead bull. Here goes QQQ test, and there is a break, so that's a nice win for the Bears. Now what do we need for the Bears? We need to eventually confirm a five-minute downtrend. Bulls could not confirm a five-minute uptrend. So Bears will need to confirm the five-minute downtrend. Next QQQ support is down at 290-230 on the daily level. But again, the break is nice, but... Got to keep following through. Got to keep these short-term trends favoring bear follow-through. Can't just be breaking by a few pennies because that's when potential falling wedges try and shape up. Mm. 
Netflix next support. And my original target for Netflix in an ideal world was looking down at this little gap here. That gap starts to get filled at 332.63. That's still a ways away. So this, this bear break for QQQ and the fact that we do have all major sectors at the low of the day together makes me much less interested in bull trades today. I'd rather just be looking for five minute lower highs, looking for 15 minute lower highs, looking for hourly lower highs. So keep an eye on Apple, that Apple support in the low 149s. That's the next thing that the bears would really want to see. So now the question from here is who's going to confirm the first five minute trend in regular trading hours on QQQ? So Riot has space for a five minute lower high. MARA has not broken its low of the day yet. Coin stands out strong. Coin's doing, Coin is giving us that tightening five minute range, ignoring that new QQQ low of the day. So Coin is the strongest crypto name that I'm looking at here this morning so far. So can the QQQ bears confirm a five minute downtrend after next bounce? I'm gonna be watching for a potential five minute lower high on AI or maybe Riot. Bitcoin still holding on sideways, not really a factor right now. So we've now got home sales data out of the way, not much impact. IWM is a lead bear. Let's check out that daily chart. IWM is a potential daily bear flag. Lower high set and now 188.53, a dollar away, which would confirm the daily downtrend on IWM. JEPI, that dividend name we were looking at, is heading down towards its support. So essentially, I'm going to be looking bearish as long as we're in hourly downtrends on SPY and QQQ. And if we shape up hourly uptrends, then I will shift my perspective. But I'm sticking with the bears as long as those hourly downtrends are nice and clear. Next XLF support level, now that we've confirmed the daily downtrend. 35.91, we're testing that right now. And then there's not a ton. We're looking down at 35.46 as the next level. Weekly consolidation, clearly underway. Clear weekly uptrending resistance line to be keeping an eye on for the financial sector.
Amazon tight range breaking bear. Apple no new low of the day yet. Bears want to see that as well. Break of 150 would have QQQ following through a bit under its support. But this is so far the ideal start to the week for the Bears. Both QQQ and XLF took out the support levels that were very important to me as far as short-term levels. And the one thing that's missing is Apple breaking its support. So that's the next trophy that the Bears want to walk away with. But bears are comfortable. The more we drop here, the more space we have for a five minute lower high next bounce on QQQ. Meta is still holding the low of the day. Five minute stair step up and then a stair step down. Coin's got a nice five minute tightening range. Equilibrium. So again, at this point, if I'm looking for five minute lower highs, I'm just patiently waiting for QQQ to get a five minute bounce going. So again, the two things still on the list, Apple low of the day, Apple 149, what's the exact level, 149.27. 149.22 and QQQ confirming a five minute downtrend after the next bounce. Those will be things that would keep the bears confident on the morning. NVDA gave back its morning bull move. Its low of the day is coming back into play. Five minute stair step drop. So the names that have not hit a new low of the day stand out a little bit stronger. Again, I don't have interest playing bounces, but if I wanted to be an aggressive bull, I'd be looking at the names that have not broken the low of the day, like Meta, Tesla, NVDA. Apple is testing its low of the day right now, still holding at the moment. AI is now pulled back almost 10% from the high of the day. And again, the reason I'm remaining patient right now is because I do have 
some decent bearish positions already. If I had no bearish exposure, I definitely would be a bit more aggressive. The fact that all major sectors hit the low of the day together. Check in shop. So shop hit a new low of the day, no follow through. Again, same thing. Can the bears confirm a five minute downtrend next bounce to continue to keep that confidence of short term control? Big drop off since earnings continues. We've got three gap downs in a row. And if we break 4190, which we did, we're now in gap fill territory. So the gap fill is 40, 48. So if we keep a five minute downtrend on the morning, bears are gonna be hoping to head towards 40, 48 for that gap fill. Bears would love to see the names that are still holding out, breaking their lows, Tesla, NVDA, Apple's a double bottom by a penny. Biotech sector down big today, giving back that. Look at that five minute stair step drop all morning, giving back that. Entire big bounce on Friday. Testing the low right now, 84.22. Decent number of five minute stair step drops right now with this QQQ weakness. Apple new low of the day, 150 psychological test. So bears are now in cruise control and something would have to change for that to change. Or you would need five minute uptrends to be developed. It's gonna take a while for bulls to prove anything to us if they're gonna be able to. So again, just not looking bullish. Personally. Checking in on the volume just to see if the bears are bringing the volume or not. So the comparison I do is I just look at, all right, we've got 45 minutes in the trading day. So let's look at the first 30 minutes on Friday versus the first 30 minutes today on KikiQ. It is lower volume. So it doesn't really give me much information. It's not notable either way. It would be notable if it was increasing bear volume, but it's not. SPY next support, I'm looking down at 428. We'll just call it 400 psychological. Weekly consolidation convincingly underway. And the next trophy the bears wanna walk away with today would be an Apple 149.22 break. That would ensure pretty solid red day if that were to break. And again, we got a lot of space for five minute lower highs now as the bears have followed through under that 297.25 support. So Meta's testing the low, Tesla broke the low. NVDA testing the low. A couple names still holding out, trying to hang on.
If I were looking long, which I'm not, I'd be keeping an eye on the five minute stair step drop pattern. So something like XBI, if it breaks the five minute stair step bull, just a low risk stop under the low of the day, trying for an oversold bounce. But again, I'm just sticking one way directional. And the biggest reason I'm sticking one way directional for today is because all of our major sectors hit the low of the day at the same time. That's something I've been waiting for. Checking to see if Bitcoin's being impacted here from the stock market weakness. Back to testing the low of the day. XBI five minute stair step did break bull. Certainly going to be looking for a five minute lower high there. AI is just a bit of free fall, no five minute bounce. Next support is 2136. That was a news trap. So think of how differently the morning would have shaped up if QQQ held the low of the day and broke the high of the day to confirm a five minute downtrend. Just complete opposite mornings. That's why that first 15, 20 minutes is often so important to dictate momentum on the day. QQQ is only just getting to five minute oversold conditions because of that morning bounce. Checking the futures RSI levels just to see if we're, you know, getting extreme anywhere. Hourly is only just getting oversold. 15 minute is not oversold. So we are not in any notable oversold conditions. So again, we need to see a five minute lower high and lower low for QQQ bears to confirm the first five minute downtrend of the trading day. That would just be icing on the cake for their morning. We'll keep an eye on the bounce retracement size the next time a five minute bounce gets going. XBI trying to follow through on that stair step. At this point in time, the bull break happened at 84.34. The stop is 84.17. So we would need to go up to the 84.50s for a bull to be able to sell half and go risk-free with a stop under the low of the day, which is how I generally trade a stair step.
So we're gonna key, 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 five minute. Let's draw our retracements just to get a rough idea of what the bulls would need to get to if it were gonna be a notable bounce. They would have to see 50% plus bounce retracement, which would mean 297.50 or so would then start to create the space for a potential five minute trend change attempt. Bears wanna see a rejection from five minute EMA 12 to keep a five minute bear flag on the table. Simple statement is if we can't get over five minute EMA 12, it's a five minute bear flag. So now I'm keeping an eye on the AI one minute time frame. Again, knowing that I'm looking for a five minute lower high, what I would want to see is bulls confirm a one minute uptrend. And then I scout that bearish entry at five minute EMA 12 resistance. But at this point, bear flags are still on the table. And again, because I have the bear exposure, I'm not gonna be chasing down here. I don't enter any positions, it's A-OK, -okay. it's gonna be a green day. You can keep trying for the one minute uptrend. Again, you gotta confirm that one minute uptrend for any five minute bounce to be meaningful. AI still has a lot of relative weakness. So one minute uptrend confirmed on QQQ. Zooming out, five minute EMA 12 coming into the picture. NVDA did hold its low of the day. Not many names did. Meta is pretty much a double bottom. So it's currently five minute bear flag until bulls prove otherwise.
Uber's got a nice tight five minute range. Potential equilibrium shaping up there. Coin is also still holding its low of the day. So again, any name that is holding its low does stand out with a little bit of relative strength. Let's check out Amazon's next daily support as it is a lead bear. 9152. We're already down approaching 20% from the high of the bounce. Amazon is a potential monthly bear flag as long as monthly EMA 12 is resistance. It would probably be one of the first major QQQ names to break to lower lows if we were going to see names break to lower lows. Certainly names like Meta, nowhere close. Apple's nowhere close. QQQ low of the day test, trying to confirm the five minute bear flag. So there's our new low. We have a new resistance level now, five minute lower high, 296.97 on QQQ. So again, if we just want a simple statement, if that level is resistance, the bears have absolute control. So what would be, what would it take for me to be interested long? If I'm going to be playing counter trends, it's got to be extremes. And again, we're not in extreme oversold conditions or even close to it. So I know that how I am positioned to trade this market in the short term is I will miss the next hourly bounce because what the bulls are going to have to do to get my attention is see a big hourly bounce without me. And I say, okay, that's big enough that I'm going to scout the hourly high or low for the trend change attempt to eventually take place. But until we see that bounce, it's just sticking with the trend, sticking with the now daily and hourly trends. We've got a monthly downtrend, a daily downtrend, an hourly downtrend. We've got a weekly uptrend. So again, you got to determine which time frame is most important to you because they are a bit different. Still watching Apple 149.22 coming closer and closer into the picture. Eventually here, I will shift to the 15 minute time frame being the most clear. That's usually the way that the morning goes out for me. I care about the one minute, two minute charts, the first 15 minutes. I care about the five minute chart, the first hourly. I care about the five minute chart all day, but eventually we're gonna get a bounce here that will have us looking for a 15 minute lower high, anything under the high of the day. 
And it's usually around 10.30 to noon that I start to focus on the 15-minute time frame a bit more. Just as we get more and more data through the morning on our charts. And now I already know at this point, after that five minute bounce was not big enough for me to have an interest in entering AI bearish, that it will be the 15 minute lower high that I am scouting from here. And again, definitely in a more patient mindset with positions already. XLV has stopped hitting the lows with XLF and QQQ. Doesn't mean a ton to me. XLF and QQQ at the lows together is definitely still a good sign for the bears. Just a little observation. Another thing that I'll often do on a, a trending morning like this is look for the time frame on whatever name you're looking at. So like, let's look at AI. AI one minute EMA 12 resistance is a good short term guide. If we get over that, then that will tell me our most meaningful bounce of the morning is likely trying to take shape. But I wanna find, you know, let's look at Apple. What has Apple been rejecting from the whole drop here? Well, we haven't got over two minute EMA 12 at any point over the last almost an hour. No, not that much, the last 40 minutes. So again, I just wanna make it as simple as possible. And I can say, if two minute EMA 12 is resistance on Apple, the bears have absolute control. The bulls aren't proving anything on a bounce. Once you get over that, then it's easy to see, okay, something's shifting a little bit. We may be shaping up that 15 minute bounce. But it's pretty much like I can turn off my brain. If I establish something clear and say, all right, that's my guide, then I can turn off my brain and say, you know, I don't need to overanalyze here. If that's resistance, it's full bear control. Currently, the five minute bear flag is lacking follow through on QQQ. So if we do break that resistance where we topped out, 296.97. Again, that's when I zoom out to the 15 minute and I scout the 15 minute lower high, anything under the high of the day. And so the names that are positioned better if we were to see that 15 minute bounce are the names that didn't break their low of the day. There aren't many. Tesla, Meta, and NVDA broke with no follow through. But coin didn't break. Coins 15 minute bounce is on the verge of being underway here. So I'm gonna wrap it up here and, and that's just what I'm watching. Five minute lower high resistance. If it breaks, I zoom out and look for a 15 minute lower high. I know I'm still gonna be interested in AI for a 15 minute lower high as a result of the next bounce. I might be interested in the biotech sector as well. They've certainly been showing enough weakness all morning. Again, just don't see a setup where I'm gonna be looking long at, at any point today. Even if the bulls control the rest of the day from here, it's just gonna be a, an hourly bounce that will have to develop into an eventual trend change. Apple 149.22 still holding, keeping an eye on that level. And that's that. Appreciate you all tuning in. Again, check out that webinar we got on Thursday with Jungle Funk Joey. 
and I will be back in the Trek Guys chat room here in just a moment. 